Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel or if you're new welcome to my channel this is Anubis and today I wanted to go over something a little bit interesting and something that is starting to become more popular again which is building your own PC. Now that PC parts have started to come down namely GPUs have started to come down some are even below MSRP at the moment it's starting to shape up to be a really good time to build your own PC if you want to get into something like that. Um, so today we're going to go over a parts list and this is going to be subject to change with every YouTuber out there, every techie that you go to, they're all going to have their own opinion on what is the best build. This is my take on it. This is my best bang for the buck build under a thousand dollars. And this is what I came up with. So. What we have here is something that's going to run you uh, really good at 1440p, maybe like 120 hertz, um, and 1080p as well if you wanted to do that. Uh, but you could probably push 1440p, 120 hertz if you decided to lower your settings a little bit. So this is a super solid setup. It's a good all-rounder. And it's something that most people that are going to get into building their own computer could probably afford. But what we have right here for the CPU, I chose the CPU that I actually have in my own personal rig at home here, the Ryzen 5 5600X. It's $198 and it's a little higher price than the 5600G. But the key factor in that one, it does have a better boost clock. And if you hit the win on the silicon lottery, it's a pretty good overclocker as well if you use Precision Boost Overdrive. So all around, a really good, super solid gaming CPU in 2022. Even in 2021, it was really good as well. And it competes. So that's what I put there. It's $198.88. And it's not too bad, not too bad at all for a brand new chip. So what we did is I couldn't remember if it came with a cooler or not. So I threw one in there and it's one I've used in the past and I've had pretty good cooling results with it. I mean, it's not AIO level, uh, no liquid cooling level there, but uh, for $25, it's a super solid option. It's the Arctic Freezer 7X CPU cooler, and it's just a tower cooler with a single fan on it, and it's not too bad. It'll get the job done, especially considering that Ryzen chips, they don't have a high TDP. They don't get very hot to begin with, so it's easy to keep them cool, um, and that'll do just fine. So next on the list, we went with a cheaper motherboard. We went with the MSI B550M Pro VDH, and we chose the Wi-Fi version because a lot of people are running Wi-Fi nowadays, and you may want to use that. So I went ahead and chose that. You could probably find a slightly cheaper version of this same motherboard if you find the one that doesn't have the Wi-Fi, but you probably won't be saving a crap ton of money. So that's why I went with this one, because you get that extra feature. And for 100 bucks, it's not a bad board. So that's the one I recommend. And then next for RAM, Ryzen loves fast memory. So I went with the kit that I used to use. And it is the right, or not the Ryzen, the G-Skill Rip Jaws 5. It's a 16 gigabit kit or gigabyte kit. And it's two sticks because you want to run dual channel. That's just the better configuration. CL16, 3200 megahertz. Super solid option for only 58 bucks. You really can't beat it. I'm sure there's, if you went with some off brand, there'd probably be some cheaper options out there, but I can't imagine it'd be for a whole lot less. 58 bucks is, it, it's a pretty solid price for DDR4 RAM right now. And so I know the next thing for storage, we went with, instead of the 500 gigabyte one that I was going to go with, I decided to throw in for a few dollars more, I think it was like 15 or $20 more, we decided to go with the team group one terabyte M.2 uh, NVMe solid state drive. This is a really good price and NVMe drives have come down quite a bit in price over the last two or three years. 
they're super affordable now, especially at that one or two terabyte level. You can find some pretty good stuff for a reasonable price. And so that's why I went with this. Team Group is not a bad brand. They're pretty good. I've had stuff by them in the past. I've had RAM and hard drives and stuff, and they're not that bad. Um, pretty reliable. So that's the reason why I went with that. It's a little bit cheaper than going with something like a Samsung Evo. Um, that's what I have in my rig, but again, it, it wasn't cheap. It, it was like a hundred plus dollars for the same amount of storage. So I figured I'd go with this cause it's a cheaper option and it's still reliable. And that'll hold all your games. It'll get you windows. It'll get you everything you need. And then you can upgrade in the future if you want, like a hard disk drive or something like that. You can always add that to this build. And then for the meat and potatoes of the build, we went with the MSI GeForce RTX 3060. It's a 12 gigabyte card, which for a low run card, you're never going to use up all of that VRAM anyways. And 12 gigabytes is not really necessary. Ten, I would say 10 is the limit for what you really need nowadays. And that really depends on the workload that you're throwing at it if you're just doing gaming. Usually 8 gigabytes is plenty, um, but maybe 10 or 12 gigabytes if you're doing something heavy, something serious like editing and uh, maybe some photo production or, uh, you know, creating videos. Something like that may use up a bit more, but for gaming, you're never going to use up that 12 gigabytes. Uh, and the 3060 is a good option for 1080p gaming. It's super solid. And you might even be able to do some lower settings, 1440p gaming on it, maybe medium settings, but it should still get you by, especially if you have a higher refresh rate monitor. That's an excellent choice to get started. And it's coming in at $380, which is a lot cheaper than it was like six or seven or eight months ago. It was upwards of like $800, $700 for that card, which is absolutely ridiculous for an entry level card. Like $400 should never be exceeded by an entry level card. $400 is like the limit in my opinion. But for $380, considering that it came down, it's half the price it was, it's not a bad option right now. And it, it'll get you by for quite a while. And it's not a bad choice. And you can always go with an AMD var uh, variant if you want. You can go with the uh, RX uh, 6500 XT. That's not a bad one. Or the 6600 XT, I think, is around the same price. Uh, so if you're an AMD person, you could always go with that instead. Um, and that's kind of just an option that you can choose from. So I didn't add it on here. I didn't make a separate parts list because it would have been the same parts minus the GPU changing anyways. But that is an option if you want to choose an AMD version of a card. And then for the case, I did a lot of looking around and I tried to find something under 60 bucks that had some solid airflow. And I personally had a hard time, but this is the one I chose. It's a super solid case. It's the Deep Cool Matrix 40 MATX case. It'll fit your motherboard. It'll fit everything you need in there. We got a smaller GPU, so it'll fit in there perfectly. And it's only $63, which, like I said, usually you can find something a little bit cheaper. I couldn't find anything that I would buy myself. And that's kind of how I made this list is, you know, if I was on a budget under $1,000 and I wanted to get the most from my gaming experience and really get the most out of my hardware, what would I build? And this is what I came up with. So I chose parts that I would personally pick. And so the Deep Cool Matrix, it'll be a good case. It's got mounting options for fans in the front, back, and top, I believe. And it should do you just fine for airflow because that's always the key thing you want with any case is you want to have something that has good airflow, especially if you're running something that gets really hot, like, you know, a 3090 Ti or a, you know, Intel 12th Gen 12900K. You want something that's going to be able to cool that. But again, like I said, with Ryzen, you don't have to worry that much about it getting too hot. And that's why we went with the setup between the cooler and the case. It should do you just fine. And then next on the list, we have the power supply. Now, I went a little overboard with the power supply wattage. You don't need a 650 watt. But I went with it because you want something that's going to be good for the future if you decide to upgrade your cpu or upgrade your gpu and 
you know, something's going to be eating up more watts. You want something that's going to be a little bit more future resistant than the bare minimum. And so that's what I believe in. I always believe in going a little over on the wattage that you need for your power supply just to be safe and just so you have some future upgrade ability. So for 60 bucks, which ain't a bad price at all, for a gold rated 650 watt power supply, it's an excellent choice. The EVGA Supernova, great brand, great power supply line. And for 60 bucks, you really can't beat it too much. So that's why I went with that. And it's fully modular as well. So you can remove some of the messy cables and have better cable management. So it's pretty much got all the bells and whistles that you would look for in a, in a power supply for only 60 bucks. And it's a reliable brand. Can't beat it. So that's why I came up with it. And you may not see Windows 10 on here. That's because let's move over to Kinguin. Kinguin is a site that I use to buy my Windows 10. Super reliable site, and you can trust it, no problems. It's not sketchy. It's not some weird site that you're going to, like, have your information stolen. You know, none of that weird stuff. Um, me and all my buddies use this site, and I know there may be some cheaper ones out there to buy Windows keys and stuff, but this is the one I've always trusted, and that's why I'm going with it here. But as you can see on screen, we can get a Windows 10 OEM key for only $20. And that'll get rid of that nasty watermark that's at the bottom. And then you don't have to worry about it. And you don't have to worry about paying $200 for a Windows key. Like that, I don't know anybody that doesn't think that that is way overpriced. But, it, you know, what can you do? That's why there's websites and people out there like this that, you know, can sell you an OEM key for a lot cheaper. So you can get the home version for $20. Or you can get the professional version for $26. Um, you know, it all depends on what you want to go with. But, you know, they're not that bad. Or if you want to go with an online activation key, you can pay a little bit more. Uh, that's up to you. Either way, it's a lot cheaper than going to Microsoft site and buying, you know, a $200 key that, you know, does the exact same thing. You know, I, I just, I, I reasonably, I, I can't justify spending that kind of money on something like that when you can get it elsewhere for much much cheaper but uh yeah so that'll cover your windows key and then so let's just say you're going with the windows 10 home oem key that's 20 bucks then you got the 958.59 for the build so you're looking at about 980 bucks that's not bad that's not bad at all compared to what this build would have gone for eight months ago, you would have been paying double this. So, you know, now that prices have gone down on GPUs and stuff, it's a great budget build. It's a great build for anybody who's looking to get into PC gaming or anybody who needs like a, you know, a good 1080p editing rig and maybe, you know, something to just game on on the side. You know, this is an excellent choice for them and this will get you by for quite a while. You know, it's not going to break the bank if you, you know, save up or, you know, if this is all the money you have laying around. It's one of the best options out there for a build. And it's something that I would personally make myself. Like I said, these are all parts that I would pick to build a computer myself. So that's pretty much going to do it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this, you know, helped make up your mind a bit about certain parts to use for your computer. And get an idea of what you can look forward to in terms of what parts to get for the price. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, leave a like down below. Let me know what you thought of the video. And that's going to do it. But this is Anubis, and I'm signing out. I'll catch you on the next one, guys.